Good morning, friends. It's so good to see all of you. Joy, I want to take you up on your offer and try to figure out when we can find a way to invite as many of us as can come together as possible. If anyone has an idea, wants to do some work on that, obviously it'll be based on everyone's schedule, including mine, but it would be so lovely to have a gathering for those who can, maybe at nine o'clock on a weekday, who knows, um, so we could do a live broadcast with as many of us as can come together, either in Westchester, where I live, or New York City, where I work, or somewhere. It would be lovely. And I know it's well in advance because we're, quote, only on broadcast 893. But I would really love, I would really love for us to do something magnificent for the 1,000th 1000th, 1000th broadcast. It would be beautiful to share that with all of you. And, uh, and thank you for, for wanting it too. Haiti, I'm so honored to welcome you from Turkey to our community. I don't know that we've had anyone in Turkey ever join. So we have today, if I'm counting correctly, we have Fabrice, who's coming to us from Paris. We have Masiek, who's in Poland. Haiti, you're in Turkey. And we've got lots of friends up and down the East Coast and all over the United States. Let's make it a point, friends, to never miss the global reach of this community, what we were able to do in a moment of dire need, and what would be so impossible to conceive of back back before and in fact that is a good thing uh, a good segue into talking about Sukkot let's talk about Sukkot in just two days the holiday of Sukkot begins and just two and a half days ago it was Yom Kippur give out friends what an incredible journey this has been and what do we know about Sukkot that could relate to this community that we have created Sukkot is actually about marking impermanence within Jewish and personal and universal history. Sukkot is a moment where if we are blessed to have a home, and let's pause there for a second, if we are blessed to have a home, which everyone should be blessed with, because it's a right, it shouldn't be a privilege to have a home, it should be a basic human right. If we are blessed to have a home, we are called to build a temporary structure outside of our home to remind us that once upon a time it wasn't like this. Once upon a time, this solid roof over my head, having more than I need, the ability not just to have a roof, but technology, a way of connecting with the world based on commitments and values and, it's complicated, but the luxury of spending our time like this when the world was on its head, as it seems to always remain, but when it was on its head three and a half years ago, we scrambled and found a way toward each other because we could. And that, that put us far ahead of the game compared to the way so many people experienced that time and this. So let's think for a moment about how Sukkot reminds us of all that. We go and we build a temporary structure and it doesn't need to be grand. The description in the ancient text, by which I mean the Torah, is basukot teshvu, sit in a sukkah. It doesn't actually define it. The rabbis thousands of years later, 2,000 years ago for us, described the minimum requirements for a sukkah, and it wasn't about it being elaborate, and it wasn't about wonderful food being eaten in it. It was about how short it could be, because perhaps we shouldn't require of each other grand structures. I remember being in Jerusalem years and years ago for Sukkot, and there was a beautiful sukkah called Sukkot Or, a sukkah of light, built in Kikar Safra, downtown Jerusalem, where little beautiful lights were strung up, and it looked like it was about 30 feet high, and then there was schach, the beautiful roof, and it was grand, and it was beautiful, and it was amazing, and it doesn't really feel like the sukkah of our ancestors, does it? but a bare, simple sukkah, something that we build. And if someone like me can build it, you know it's not gonna be a grand, elaborate, stable structure. But how powerful it is, friends, how powerful it is to know that this holiday coming up is a reminder to be humble in the world, a reminder that we should be grateful for what we have. If our ancestors could only see the homes 
that we are blessed to have. And then to think to themselves, one day they're going to have enough that they will recreate our shabby huts, our desert huts. And Arlene, you just wrote, our schach has a few holes this year. You're looking for some branches to cover this area. Now, I bless you, you should find the branches. But isn't it an incredible, honest reflection of how we travel through the desert to know that your schach isn't going to be perfect. Your tent won't be amazing. We're told by legend that during our time in the desert, our clothing didn't wear out. Our shoes didn't wear out. We had what we needed. Friends, let me ask you a simple question when it comes down to it. What do you need? What does any human being need? That's what Sukkot is about. Our shuls are so magnificent over the high holidays. But what do we need? I just need to be able to talk to God. I just need to be able to sit with friends and family. I just need to work on my own soul and do as well as I can, forgive myself for my failure, and then get back to work and I need to keep on trying. Sukkot is an external version of that internal work. It is hard work, but it is humble work. It is humble and it is humbling. Sukkot is not meant to be elaborate and ornate. It is certainly not meant to be perfect because it's a model of life and we are not held to standards of perfection. We are held to standards of personal actualization and of striving to do better, striving to help each other better. I need to step outside of this beautiful home that my family and I are so blessed to have. We work hard to have it and we are so mindful that we do. So let's let's suggest that we learn from each other. We learn from tradition to keep an eye on the world and to humble ourselves, to remind ourselves that we are called to be in service of this world and that everyone should have simply what they need. Friends, I bless us. We have a day and a half to build the sukkah before Sukkot. Please God, the weather should hold out. We should be able to enjoy ourselves in the sukkah. May we remember, as Judy just wrote, that our guests, our guests are the decorations. What a gift that will be to share time, friends, to share time and space and holiness and devotion to this beautiful world from humble hearts. All right, friends. Let's talk again soon, maybe tomorrow, 9 o'clock. I'll see you there. Let's sing our way into a good day. Here we go. See you tomorrow.